Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for bringing us together. Thank you because of your every one of us to be our best for you and to base our lives upon your word and to so live our lives and conduct our ministries that we receive a well done from you on the final day. Be with us all through this period of leadership training. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. You are going to read after me. Say everything after me. Commitment. I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have the Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. My decision has been made. I am a disciple of his. I won't look back. I won't let up. I won't slow down. I won't back away. I won't be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I am finished and done with low living. I'm finished and done with sight walking, with small planning, with smooth knees, with colorless dreams, with tamed visions, with mundane talking, with cheap living, with dwarfed goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, or position. I no longer need promotions, plaudits, or popularity. I don't have time to be right, to be forced, to be taught, to be recognized, to be praised, to be regarded, or to be rewarded. I now live by faith. I lean on his presence. I walk by patience. I live by prayer. I labor by power. My face is set. My gait is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions few. My guide reliable. My mission clear. I cannot be bought. I cannot be compromised. I cannot be deterred. I cannot be lured away. I cannot be turned back. I cannot be deluded or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice. I will not hesitate in the presence of the adversary. I will not negotiate at the table of the enemy. I will not ponder at the pool of popularity. I will not meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up. I won't shut up. I won't let up until I've stayed up, stood up, prayed up, paid up, preached up the cause of Christ. I'm a disciple of Jesus. I must go on until he comes. I must give until I drop. I must preach all I know. I must walk until he stops me. And when he comes for his own, when he comes for his own, he will have no problem recognizing me. My banner will be clear. Amen. May God confirm your commitment today.
We can sit down now. I welcome you once again to this year's Leadership Congress. We have gathered as pastors and church leaders to receive fresh vision from the Lord and to renew our strength for our divinely appointed and assigned task. Without a renewed vision from God, our lives may be wasted on non-essentials and the activities of our lives may not be rewarded in eternity. Without vision from above, we shall be blind and unqualified to lead the blind to the Lord Jesus Christ, the light of the world. We're going to pray with Peter Marshall. Here's the way he prayed. Lord, give us a clear vision that we may know where to stand and what to stand for because unless we stand for something we shall fall for anything unless you stand for something you'll fall for anything that's the reason why you are praying to the lord during this congress that he'll give you a fresh vision so that you will know what to stand for and where to stand and where to declare your stand because unless God so works within you and renews your commitment and conviction and you are able to stand for something eternally significant you'll fall for anything that eventually at the end of time at the end of life you regret every step that you ever took imagine a group of doctors now they've gathered for a conference because of their vision and their concern to offer help and healing to the dying nations around them what will their attitude be what will their comportment be what will their deliberations be like our nations are dying and spiritual life is dying in many nations what's your vision what's my vision what's our vision together what's our burden what's our concern What's our commitment? Each leader's vision and burden will determine his comportment during this Congress and will determine your effectiveness in ministry after the Congress. That's the reason we're starting with the Word of God, the preeminent Word in the church. The Word of the Lord is preeminent, and in your life, as well as ministry, that Word must be conspicuously present when people listen to you when people look at you when people view your life and see what you do how you behave how you relate to your family how you relate with people and the preaching the messages that you give the word of god the undiluted unchanging infallible word of god should be conspicuously present not only present prominent there will be no foolish stories and silly talk and incongruent illustrations, but it will be the word of God that will be prominent as well as preeminent in your ministry and thereby will be prominent, preeminent in the church. Because only the word of God, the word of Christ, the word of life can keep the church vibrant and spiritual. That's what every Christian needs, and that's what every minister needs. That's what the whole church needs. In the Psalms, Psalm 138, verse 2. 138, verse 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Listen to this, for thou hast magnified thy word above thy name thou hast magnified thy word above thy name as you look at that you then begin to think and meditate that the name of god is so significant and so mighty and so powerful and so wonderful and yet all my, the almighty god has exalted and he has magnified his word above beyond his name 
Are you sick about many other things? For example, there are people in the church and the name of God is above the people and the word of God is above the name of God. Therefore, the Lord will magnify his word above the people. You think about the various ministries in the church and the various activities in the church and those activities might be wonderful, enriching, blessing. And yet, because the name of the Lord is above all those activities and the word of the Lord is above the name of the Lord, the Lord definitely, obviously, he has magnified his word above our religious activities. As you think about the things that are important to church leaders, the policies and the administrative kind of edicts that are written down, those things are very important to help the church. And yet, the name of the Lord, the strong tower, the righteous, runneth into it and is saved. And the word of God is above the name of the Lord. It's magnified, exalted, above the name of the Lord. Obviously, then the word of the Lord must be magnified, exalted, above all the administrative statements and the policies of the church. If there is anything that is very significant, as we leaders come together, it is to understand that the word of God should be preeminent in the church of the living God. Thou hast magnified, exalted, thy word above thy name and as to come in here you want to magnify the word of the lord above everything else obviously as we're here we need fellowship together but the word of god is above that fellowship as we're here obviously we'll need time to rest our body and to sleep but the word of the lord is magnified above resting the body and sleep obviously as we're here together we cannot do without some water and some food but the word of the lord is magnified above all those physical needs of the body above the food obviously as we're here we'll need to uh, do things this way and you need your own time to do this and to do that but the word of the lord should be magnified above those things you want and desire in your life if we can just bring the word of god to the very center of our lives and ministry of everything that we do that will really please the lord in matthew chapter 28 verse 18 matthew 28 verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo, I am with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. Uh, there are some people that will give us an idea that now it is the modern world. The times have changed. And you see a lot of things in modernism and modernity. And because of that, they feel that we should take some liberty and modify the word of the Lord. But here Jesus Christ said, until the end of the age, until the end of time until the end of the world until it comes again will keep on teaching to observe teaching the people of god to observe that is to obey to believe to accept to embrace the totality of the word of god all things whatsoever i have commanded you uh, paul the apostle ministered to the church at ephesus and he had to call the leaders together in acts chapter 20 verse 17 Acts chapter 20 verse 17 and this was chapter 20 verse 17. It says and from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and he called the elders of the church just like we're doing now. And as he called those elders of the church he reminded them when he came together in verse 20 how I kept nothing that was profitable unto you didn't keep anything back from you but showed you and taught you publicly and from house to house that is when he taught publicly it was the word of god when he taught privately it was the word of god when he stood on the pulpit it was the word of god and it was it was sitting on the chair chair just sharing one-on-one -on -one with another leader another elder in the church it was the word of god magnifying the word of god above 
every other sin, testifying to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Then in verse 25, now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have been preaching, have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. He was rounding up his ministry with them. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I'm pure from the blood of all men. You ministers who want to preach the word of God. And you want to stand on the word of God. You want the word of God, the totality of the word, the entirety of the word To be so present, prominent, preeminent in your ministry That you would have taught the people, the whole counsel of God And then you'll be able to say, I am pure from the blood of all men Then he tells us in verse 27 For I have not shown to declare unto you the whole counsel, all the counsel of God Take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Verse 32, and now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word, to the word, to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. The same thing the Lord is reminding us as we begin our leadership congress at this time. There are three points, three elements we are going to deal with in the message. Number one, progress through the ministry of the word. Progress through the ministry of the word. Number two, the power of miraculous transformation by the word. The power of miraculous transformation by the word. Number three, the priority of ministers of the word. The priority of ministers of the word. Number one, progress through the ministry of the word. As you look at the early church, the early church came to lie and began to grow immediately by the preaching of the word. And if the church is still going to make progress, spiritual progress, and to be built on solid foundation, it's going to be on the word of God. Progress and growth came in the early church through the word of God. Progress in the New Testament was not described numerically, really. It was described through the word spreading and prevailing everywhere, taking effect and taking root in many hearts and many lives and many homes and many cities and many communities. Look at the church in the Acts of the Apostles. Let's start from the very beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 41. And see the progression as well as the progress. Acts chapter 2. Reading from verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word. They were baptized and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. They that received his word. 3,000 people became converted. And they were baptized and they were added to the church of the living God. When it says they that received his word, and you think of what has happened in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. The Holy Ghost came, they were speaking in tongues. There was the manifestation of the tongues of fire and the fulfillment of the prophets of the prophecy that had been given hundreds of years before came to them. But they didn't dwell on just the power of the Holy Ghost. They didn't dwell on the gift they have just received. Immediately, they began to preach the word of God to the people that came. And you'll see that the preaching, the evangelistic preaching, was Bible-based. It referred to Joel. And after referring to Joel, that is the prophecy of Joel, it came to the Lord Jesus Christ, exalting the Lord Jesus Christ. Talking about the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then concluding with the fact that if they would repent, because repentance is in the watch of God, 
that the Lord will forgive them that as they moved on with the Lord, the Lord will even give them the gifts of the Spirit because the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That Bible-based message word drew them as it was breathed on by the Holy Ghost. It drew them to conviction and conversion and 3,000 people were converted. It started with the word of God. Look at chapter 4 verse 4. As we move on in the Acts of the Apostles, it says in verse 4, chapter 4, How be each many of them which heard the word believed. Once again, it's the word. And many people, more, they came to know the Lord. And the number of the men was about 5,000. You see, the progress and the progression of the church, the early church, and every time that progress was tied to the word of God. And move on to chapter 6. As we come to chapter 6 and you are reading from verse 1. It says in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied. There arose a murmuring of the Christians against the Hebrews. Because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. As the church was growing. And they needed to put some administration in place. Because there was now murmuring and grumbling. And at this time, the progress of the church would have been kind of stopped. There would have been stagnancy from this point on. But uh, the apostles, they came together. And it took a good decision in verse 2. Then the twelve called the multitudes of the disciples unto them. And they said, it is not reason, it is not profitable, it is not right. That we should leave the word of God and serve tables. They said, first things first. The preeminent thing must remain preeminent. The prominent thing that brought many people to know the Lord Jesus Christ must remain prominent. The watch of God that was breathed upon by the spirit of the living God and it quickened life in the people. It must become, it must remain present. It will not be right for us because the disciples have multiplied and we need this and we need this and we need this for us as the leaders. For us as the apostles to leave the preaching of the word and begin to serve tables. Oh yes, the serving of the tables and the ministration to those widows is very, very important. But it must never take priority above the word of God. I want you to look at our church here. When you think about the multiplication of churches, saturating local governments and states and countries in this Africa with the word of God and the churches of the living God. And a lot of administration is needed. And the danger that we face is that at this level, we'll then concentrate on administration. And administration will come on top of the preaching of the word. But the Lord is telling us from the example of the apostles that the word of God must remain present prominent and preeminent so that's why they said it will not be right for us it's not suitable it's not fit it's not right it's not reasonable that will leave the word of god and begin to serve tables they said in verse 3 wherefore brethren look ye among you seven men of honest report full of the holy ghost and wisdom whom we, whom we may appoint over this business but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and and to what tell me out loud to the ministry of the word will this church then release their pastors their preachers their overseers their leaders the teachers of the word release them to do the work they ought to do and let the word remain present, remain prominent, and remain preeminent in the church. So that the growth we have seen, that growth will continue. When they took this decision, let's see the result in verse 7. And the word of God increased. 
and the number of disciples multiplied greatly and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith even the priest that is the members of the sanhedrin and some of those religious people in those synagogues that rejected jesus christ during his earthly ministry when these apostles when they committed consecrated themselves to the teaching of the word the ministry of the word many of those contradicting priests they now surrendered they were convicted and converted and it came to the lord jesus christ in acts of the apostles chapter 12 Acts chapter 12 and let's see what continued to happen verse 24 and the word of God grew and multiplied the word of God grew and multiplied what that means is that it's still the same word of God but it got into many hearts it reached many souls and many more people were converted and they had the word in them and as what well, many converts being converted by the word and through the word and assimilating accepting believing embracing holding on fast to the word of god that word of god spread grew and multiplied chapter 13 verse 49 and the word of the lord was published throughout all the region the emphasis remained the word of the lord wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if Jesus tarries that after more years 10 years and 20 years that administration will not become the preeminent thing in this church and feeding people that's good that's wonderful feeding people will not become the preeminent thing in this church organization church organization will not become the preeminent thing in this church education certificate will not become the preeminent thing in this church wouldn't it be wonderful that after many many years music will not become the preeminent thing in this church wouldn't it be a wonderful thing that name title popularity politics will not become the preeminent thing in this church wouldn't it be wonderful that if jesus tarries 20 years from now 30 years from now after some of us that are on stage now after we're given the baton to the generation to come that it will still be the word of god that will be prominent and preeminent in the church that after many years the progression and the progress of the church in the new testament was determined by this that the word of God continued to prevail and continued to grow. Then we read in chapter 20, chapter 19, rather, chapter 19, verse 20. In chapter 19, verse 20, here is again the comment of the word of God concerning the early church and so mightily grew. The word of God and prevailed. You see, it started with those that received the word, they were converted. They gladly received the word and then later it says many people believed the word and then it says a great multitude they accepted the truth of the word of god and then it says the word of god grew but here now it says so mightily grew the word of god and prevailed you see when we allow the word of god to take the preeminence in our lives and that word of god prevails on our conscience and prevails on our will and the word of god like hammer crushes the self-will and then the word of god saturates our hearts and then whatever ministry we have in the church we say yes i thank god for this privilege of ministry in this church but the word of god that i i am hearing is preeminent is above me and above the ministry i have and if there is anything within us like self-will trying to raise its ugly head we we'll say no no you cannot do that we allow the word of god to grow mightily and to prevail and that's the reason why as we come to this congress we're asking the lord once again that he'll wake us up to the importance of the word of god in our church and this word of god once again once again will become present prominent and preeminent in our church i go to point number two is the power of miraculous transformation by the word of god power of miraculous transformation 
by the word of God. Why should we make the word of God present, prominent, and preeminent in the church? Because the work we're doing is to have lives changed, lives transformed, hearts giving to God, hearts responding to the Lord. And if those hearts are going to be transformed, if they're going to be touched, and if they're going to be submissive to the will of the Lord, it will take the transforming power of the Word of God. And we're looking at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder, of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart it tells us it's the word of god that is quick and powerful and sometimes some of us who have had the privilege of studying a little and we've gone beyond primary school and we have some paper that some of these uh, teachers in the world gave us that they call certificate. We become proud and pompous as if it is that education, it is that uh, useless paper that can be burnt away by fire that is going to make us effective in ministry. And then instead of sticking to the word of God and remaining with the word of God, we don't understand. We think it's the psychology and the philosophy and the administration and the knowledge and ability to speak that we have acquired from all these schools that will make the people yield to our persuasive speaking. But it says no. If we're going to see miraculous transformations in the church, if we're going to see miraculous conversions in the church, if we're going to see people calling once again to the people of God, men and brethren, what shall we do? If the word of God we preach is going to pierce the heart of the people and going to drive them to their knees in submission to the Lord, saying, what shall we do? We want to be saved. We know we are guilty of our sins. We want to give our lives to the Lord. It's going to be on the basis of preaching the word and nothing but the word. The power of miraculous transformation by the world. Uh, some of our people, when they have chance to talk to me, they tell me that one of our problems in these few years is because the church is trying to exalt certificate above Christian experience. And I had to sit back and listen and say, looks like it looks like grammar and education and certificate is going beyond the value of the effect of the word of god in the lives of our people that we respect and we honor and we reward the people that happen to have certificate paper above the people that have the genuine experience and the commitment and the consecration and the devotion and i'm trying to listen and i'm seeing that we need to come back to the world and look at a person and not put him on an ivory tower because of the mundane things because of the paper this is church that once again the word of god the way individuals accept the word, they believe the word, we see they are living by the word and they're devoted to the Lord and their whole life, spirit, soul and body is committed to the word of God. I think we ought to honor that above honoring the things of the world. And don't let us, don't let us just say, yes, we have heard all of us who are leaders. Let's make a U-turn and say yes from now on. We're going to evaluate people on the basis of how they're responding to the word of God. So that once again, it will be the power of the word that is working in our midst, in our lives, in our families. It says, this word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. When it comes, it pierces us and it divides the soul and the spirit. 
and then it discovers, it reveals the intents, the intention, the planning, the motives of the very heart and the spirit. That's why we're told in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That's the word of God, the gospel of Christ, the word of life. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. When this word of God came to the Thessalonians, see how it transformed them. See how it changed them. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 5. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance. That is, it wasn't just an empty word. You know, there are people that may read the letter of the word, and it's dry, it's dead, it's cold. It doesn't, it's not breathed upon, it's not set on fire by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the fire of the Holy Ghost. But it says, when the word came to you, it came in the Holy Ghost, in the power of the Holy Ghost. As ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes. For ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with, the, with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in, not, not only in Achaia, and in Macedonia, but also in every place, your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we arch unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and the true God. You see, it brought transformation into their lives. There was a mighty change. And it was because of the word of God. Look at the evidence in chapter 2 verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without season. Because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe that is that word worked effectually in you well you see that the word then is what brings people into the kingdom of god transforms them changes them and then they become the people of god in first peter chapter one first peter chapter one verse 23 being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god of the incorruptible word of God, which lives and abides forever. If we're going to see more conversions in our ministry, preach the word. And if we're going to see people being set free from the chains and shackles of bad habits, of sinful habits, of besetting sin, preach the word. If we're going to see people clean, washed, righteous, holy, Preach the word. Ye are clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And he gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word. If we're going to see people live victoriously over sin and live like free children of God and live like saints, preach the word. Preach the word and do it in season and out of season. Psalm 119. In Psalm 119, verse 9, where without shall a young man cleanse his way. We have many young people that are coming to the church, or married single people. And the temptations are so, are so intense and heavy on them. If you are going to lead them and help them to live the victorious life, there is one thing to do, preach the word. Because it says, where without shall a young man Cleanse this way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Then it says in verse 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. The power of miraculous transformation by the word. Point number three. 
Since the word of God is what helps the early church to make progress. And that's the only thing that can help us to make progress. And since the power of transformation is in this, is embedded, is hidden, is tied to this word of God, what should be the priority of the people of God, of the leaders in the church, of the preachers in the church, the priority of ministers of the word? It should be a priority that we're stressing the word, emphasizing the word, and preaching the word, analyzing and explaining the word to the people, encouraging them with the word of God. In fact, we who are ministering should be called ministers of the word. That is, the word of God should be so central in our ministry that the only name they give us, whether pastor, overseer, coordinator, group coordinator, missionary, whatever, it will be that that man, that woman is a minister of the word. And look at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And see the way the spirit of God through Luke described those apostles and those leaders in the early church. In Luke chapter 1 verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses these are the apostles they were eyewitnesses of the ministry of jesus christ and ministers of the word and ministers of the word ministers of the word and that's why the prayer of those apostles centered on give us power give us boldness that we might declare your word so that your word will remain prominent and central essential indispensable in our ministries in acts chapter 4 acts chapter 4 reading from verse 29 acts chapter 4 verse 29 and now lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word that's all they were asking for they were not asking for the world to accept them and love them and stop persecuting them all they wanted is that god in the midst of the persecution coming from the world that god will give them the boldness to keep on declaring and speaking the word of god in verse 31 and when they had prayed the place was shaking where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the holy ghost and they spoke the word of God with what? With boldness. In Acts chapter 5, a miracle had taken place in chapter 3. Because of that, you see the result in chapter 4. Because not only the miracle, the miracle was followed up with the preaching of the word. And after the preaching of the word, then 5,000 people believed. The leaders of the nominal church, the leaders of the of the Jewish church, the Jewish people, synagogues, they were not happy. They arrested these people of God. They put them in the prison. See the priority of the ministers of the world. In verse 17 of chapter 5, Acts, then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation, wrath, and anger and laid hands laid their hands on the apostles and they put them in the common prison but the angel of the lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life they had been imprisoned what do you think if somebody had been imprisoned for preaching and he wanted to really deal with them an angel came to deliver them. What do you think will be the natural thing to do to go and hide away so that their lives will be secured and saved? But the priority of the preaching of the word is manifested here because the angels told them, you cannot stop. They mustn't shut up your mouth. They mustn't intimidate you because of the imprisonment, because of their religious power or political power or governmental power because of their cruelty, because of what they're trying to do, you go back and see those people that are gathered there because they need to know the Lord. And the only thing that will make them to know the Lord is the preaching of the word of life. So go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people. All, don't minimize it, all 
don't diminish it all don't subtract from it all don't say because of you know if we touch that area there are some people that don't accept that doctrine if we touch that area there are people that will not take that especially at that time if they touched about the death of jesus the burial and the resurrection those jewish people will be fidgeting they'll be feeling guilty you are trying to bring the blood of this man on us so they would have avoided that area because it will bring confusion it will bring conflict it will bring more persecution but don't stop don't say we know what the people don't like we know what they don't want to hear so we'll not talk about that don't do that go and speak to the people all the words of this life may god give us grace to do it and we will do it in acts of the apostles chapter 8 verse 4 acts chapter 8 verse 4 the priority of the ministers of the world it tells us in chapter 8 verse 4 and they, therefore they that was scattered abroad went everywhere doing what preaching the word preaching the word i pray that god will bring us back to that so instead of spending our time talking on useless things in the world about the politics of the world about the way the worldly things are going on useless things that are not going to convert any soul but that will then come back and recover ourselves from our spiritual slumber and our spiritual sleep and will dedicate and devote ourselves once again to the preaching of the word that as we scatter about while other people are talking about other things even religious things that we will wake up from our sleep and we'll say this is the way we used to do it this is the way the early church used to do it and we'll start all over again preaching the word in acts of the apostles chapter 18 acts chapter 18 reading from verse 9 in acts chapter 18 verse 9 it says then spake the lord to paul in the night by a vision be not afraid but speak and hold not thy peace the lord is telling us that the only reason while he's protecting the ministers of God, is so that they can have liberty to preach the word. The only reason why the Lord is blessing you as a leader, as a preacher, as a pastor, as an overseer, is to give you more chance in preaching the word. Paul the apostle was facing some difficulties in Corinth, and the Lord came to him and assured him by vision in the night. And he says, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, I'll be with you. But the only reason I'm being with you is that you will speak and you will not hold your peace. For I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. And the much people the Lord has in that city, only the word of God, with the transforming power, will reach out to them and get them into the kingdom. That's why the Lord said, I'll be with him and no man will be able to hurt him. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God teaching the word of God teaching the word of God among them and the teaching ministry must be our emphasis and you must be a teacher a teacher of the world a teacher of the world a teacher of the world when we we'll call you overseer that's wonderful we we'll call you pastor that, that's great we we'll call you father in the Lord, mother in the Lord, that's great. But the central thing you are to do, whatever the title, is to teach the word. And be a teacher. And be a teacher. Because even Jesus Christ, we're told that he went about and he stirred the people by teaching them the word. Teaching them the word teaching them the word and you don't want to come to any level you don't want to come to any situation in your christian life in your christian ministry where you think of the teacher as a derogatory term and you're thinking it is be it is beneath your ministry your dignity to be a teacher be a teacher of the word teaching the word look at that verse again it's verse 11 chapter 18 of acts and he continued there a year and six months teaching 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 the word of god among them 
in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Looking at verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Pray for us. Pray for us. And pray for yourself that the word of God will take precedence in your life and it will have free course. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, I charge thee therefore. I'm charging you tonight before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Can you stand up for a moment? As we're standing up, I want you to just visualize that here you are now in the presence of the great judge. Throw your mind forward to the day of judgment and see the court of heaven and the angels of God in attendance and see you there at the box standing. Standing before the judge of all the earth. And then he looks at your life. He looks at your ministry. And he looks at where you put the word in life and in your ministry. And as he looks at you, and he opens the records, and he wants to see what you have done for the word that he magnified above his name. What judgment are you going to have? That's what Paul was telling Timothy. That's what the Lord is telling you today. And now, while you're standing there, throwing your mind forward to the day of judgment, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, if you're going to escape the fiery judgment of God on that day, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. You'll discover it in your ministry. When the people will want to magnify another thing. They want to magnify worship, music, religious activity, Organization, church administration, orderliness, food feeding, women program, children entertainment. They want to magnify many, many, many things above the world. The challenge will come to you. The challenge will come, the time will come. When some people in your congregation, I mean known people, popular people, respected people, exalted people, when they will say that that's too much, preaching, 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 Bible, Bible, too much, they'll demonstrate it, they'll talk it. But when that time comes, for the time will come, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own laws, shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. What are you to do? Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Don't back down. Don't be conquered in your will. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. Will you do it? Will you do it? I'm a part of the fellowship of the unashamed. And I have the spirit, the spirit's power. The die is cast. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I won't look back. I won't let up. I won't slow down. I won't back away. I won't be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secured. 
I am finished and done with low living, sight walking, small planning, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tamed visions, mundane talking, cheap living, dwarfed goals. I no longer need preeminence or prosperity or position or promotion or plaudits or popularity. I don't have time to be right, to be false, to be top, to be recognized, to be praised, to be regarded, to be rewarded by anybody. I now live by faith. I lean on his presence. I'm walking by patience. I live by prayer and I labor by power. My face is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions are few. My guide is reliable. My mission is clear. I cannot be bought, I will not be compromised, I cannot be deterred, I will not be lured away, I cannot be turned back, I cannot be deluded, I cannot be delayed. I will not think, flinch in the face of sacrifice, I will not hesitate in the presence of the adversary, I will not negotiate at the table of the enemy, I will not ponder the pool of popularity, I will not meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up. I won't shut up, I won't let up until I have stayed up and stood up and prayed up and paid up and preached the, up the cause of Christ. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I must go until he comes. I must give until I draw. I must preach all I know. I must walk until he stops me. And when he comes for his own, he will have no problem recognizing me because my banner will be clear. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I'll be there when you come. 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 I'll be faithful. I'll be faithful. I'll be preaching the word. This word of God will become preeminent in my life and preeminent in my family and preeminent in my ministry. Make up your mind. Make up your mind that this word of God will be all in all in your life, all in all in your ministry. A transforming power of the word of God will walk in your life, will walk in your ministry. Don't let people shut you up. Don't let people bind you up. Don't let people just kill you and kill the power of the word from your mouth. Stand on the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. There may be a few people that will reject it. There may be people, a few people that will kick it away from them. Don't look at them. Keep on preaching the word. Preach it. Preach it. And leave it out. Let it be at the very center of your ministry. Let's bring it back to the center of our church.